Hi there Honda owners, today in your 2020 Honda Civic, we're going to be taking a look at and showing you how to install draw tights, one and a quarter inch trailer hitch receiver. And this is what our hitch is going to look like when it's installed. It's a class one, one and a quarter by one and a quarter inch receiver, so it's going to be great for all of your accessories. Whether you're wanting to put a two bike platform rack on here, or maybe a small cargo carrier to help relieve some space inside of your vehicle. It uses a half inch hitch pin and clip. Now one doesn't come included with the hitch, but we've got plenty available here at each trailer and you can also get locking ones so you can protect your investments. On bottom it's got hoop style safety chain loops with a very large opening that should accommodate just about every shape, size, and style of safety chain. The large one here works fine as well as our small one. This hitch offers a 200 pound tongue weight and that's the force going down on top of the receiver. And with that this should be enough for a two bike platform rack loaded up. And you could also put a cargo carrier in here as well. However, you do want to pay attention to the weights there as you won't be able to load it up near the maximum with only a 200 pound tongue weight. But you could get some of that gear out from inside the back of your vehicle if you needed to. It also offers a 2,000 pound gross towing capacity, which is how much that it could pull behind it. So if you had a small utility trailer and you just needed to get move some things around, maybe you're moving, or if maybe you have just a really small jet ski trailer or something that you wanted to bring with you, you should be able to do that as well with this. And now I've got some measurements for you to help you when deciding on accessories. From the center of the hitch pin hole to the edge of our rear bumper, it measures about two and a half inches. This is important when determining if your accessories can be placed inside the receiver without contacting the bumper, and if they can be placed in the upright storage position without making contact. From the ground to the top inside edge of our receiver tube, it measures about 11 and a half inches. This is important when determining if you need a drop, a rise, or a raise shank on any of your accessories. Now that we've covered some of the features of our hitch, why don't you follow along with me in the shop and we'll show you how to get it installed so you can have the confidence to do it at home. We'll begin our installation in the trunk by removing our tail light wire, uh, tail light bolts here. We'll remove both our tail light bolts using an eight millimeter socket. We're gonna do this on each side. And then just below the tail light assemblies, you're also gonna find another bolt. We're gonna remove that with a T30 Torx bit. On each side, Right here where our wheel well is, behind the rear tire, there's gonna be three screws. We're gonna remove all three of those with a Phillips screwdriver. Next, we're going to remove all the push pins from underneath our fascia, all the way across. There's about eight of them underneath there. To remove these push pins, you'll use a flat bladed screwdriver, get underneath the center pin, kind of just twist your screwdriver a little bit. Sometimes you need to go from the other side as well because these pins get really brittle really fast and they also get a bunch of dirt and debris up in them and so it's very easy to break these. They're very weak so just be very careful and just slowly kind of work it out. Once you get it started, if you switch over to a trim panel tool, you'll have more success in getting the pin out without breaking it. We'll just repeat that until all the pins are removed. If you did have mud flaps, those are covering up an additional screw, so you'll want to remove that as well. There's also some plastic covers above the exhaust. Just slide those out. They were held in by the push pins. Getting them out of the way will make it easier to get the fascia on and off. We can now start to remove our fascia. On one side, you'll want to start to peel back the fascia. So you just kind of want to pull a bit outward and a bit up and that'll pop those off there. Once you get this side popped back just to about the light here, this is the point where I like to stop and go and release the other side till about that point as well. Once you've got both of those sides released to that point, I prefer to then come to the center to where I can more easily have control. And we're just going to release it from underneath the light on that side and then release it from underneath the light on this side. Once you've got it released from the tail lights on each side, you'll then kind of want to tip it and tilt it up like this. And that'll release it from the center section here across and then it'll just come back. You wanna come back slowly and check for any wiring that you may have. There is potential that you'd have wiring here depending on the options you have in your vehicle. We didn't, so we're just gonna set this aside where it won't get damaged. If you did have connectors, disconnect those first before setting it aside. 
We'll now take a grinder and we need to cut out a section here. So we're just going to use our little cutoff wheel to do that. Uh, if you cut this out, it'll make getting your fascia back on easier. We're going to do the same thing on the other side. We can now remove our bumper beam. There's four bolts on each side. We'll use a 12 millimeter socket. I like to remove the top outer corner first and then just thread that back in uh, just a turn or two. So that way when we take out the rest of our hardware, uh, we've got a bolt still there holding it up so it won't drop. It can be a little heavy and you don't want to drop that on your toe. We'll be using new hardware so you can just discard these bolts or just save them for later if you ever want to put your vehicle back to stock. We'll now just remove those last couple of bolts. And then we'll set our bumper beam down just for a moment because we are going to be putting it back on but with our hitch sandwiched in between. Once you get them all loose, you will have to lift up just a little bit to get it released off of there. We'll then take our bumper beam. We're going to set it right on top of our hitch. Line up all the holes. And I like to take two bolts and prepare those. We're just taking the hardware that comes in our kit. And we're going to put the conical tooth washer on them with the teeth facing away from the head of the bolt. I'm just going to drop that down into a hole here on top on each side. Give it a little flip. That'll help hold these together. Then we can lift it up, get it set into place, and get a bolt started on each side. Once you get one started on each side, the assembly will hold itself up, making it easier to install the rest of your hardware right into place. It's all going to be the same hardware out of our kit. We can then go back and tighten out all of our hardware using a 13 millimeter socket. And then we can torque our hardware to the specifications outlined in our instructions. Next we'll cut out our fascia. You'll find a diagram in your instructions. I've gone ahead and marked it out here. You can cut it with a die grinder. You could use a razor knife or a pair of snips. Really whatever you have available that you are comfortable using to cut with. We're just gonna cut it along the line. And then if you've got any rough edges, you can go back with a razor knife or a file and clean those up. We can now reinstall our fascia in reverse order of how we removed it. Make sure to reinstall all the hardware in your fender well. Don't forget to put that one bolt in before putting the little mud flap on there. And that completes our installation of Draw Tight's one and a quarter inch trailer hitch receiver on our 2020 Honda Civic.